morning boys and girls. Today we're working on everybody's favorite makeup air unit. It's about 25 degrees, 22 degrees today and it's blowing cold air into the building. So we're going to find out what's going on with this thing because they said it's not tempering the air like it's supposed to. So when they kicked it on just now, I heard the belt squeal like a pig. So we're going to dig into this thing and see, uh, see what's going on. So I've done a video on this before. You can see one of those. Uh, actually, I've done two of them, I think. So like I said, this thing kicked on and it squawked, which it's not super loose, but it definitely is not as tight as it should be. This thing's fairly simple in design. You got a pressure switch system here that has to be right in the middle of what it's set for, so it can't be too low and it can't be too high. That's measuring a differential across the burner. The burner is right there. So the flame sensor and stuff's inside there, and there's a pilot system. They got a damper back behind that burner, and these uh, baffle plates strike right, right here and there can be adjusted to get the proper differential across the burner. Um, so you got a high limit in here in case the blower quits, which is somewhere all the way back over to here, uh, up, up and over, where you at, there right there's the high limit, which does not feel like it's tripped, so good. This is your heating inlet air sensor, basically it has to be at least temperature that it's set at before it can run. Burner safety, pressure switches that I talked about, variable gas valve controller and then variable gas valve and then your regulators some some different transformers blah 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 so let's go ahead and kick it on see how bad it squawks like a pig yeah so that's pretty loose what we're probably going to need which we don't necessarily have to we can get our pressure switch out and measure our differential across this pressure switch. But for right now, let's go ahead and put the cover back on, run it, and see what uh, what our lights show us as far as what's going on here. Um, this is the burner control that I had on that steam boiler. It's very popular. So if I have to, I can go grab my controller, but generally you don't need it. Today's plenty cold enough that it should be running. The temperature it tries to maintain is right here, which they've got it cranked all the way up to 78 degrees, which is a little a little up there and then here is your response time of how quickly it gets the temperature where you want it as far as trying to hold it right in that area that it wants so let's go ahead and kick this thing on see what we got all right so the first thing we got is an alarm here i could go grab the thing or we could just hit reset it'll start over um it saves it in memory either way Let's go ahead and reset it. See what happens here. Just clicked. Give it a second here. There's flame. Pilot. Main burner. This is for a kitchen, so I really don't believe we need to have it quite that hot. They probably prefer somewhere around at 65 at the most. We just basically don't want to add add a lot of heat to the kitchen. Just want to neutralize it. We'll set that at about 55 degrees. That way you're still bullying 55 degree air, it's 15 degrees, 55, 60 ish. Just depends on what kind of people you got down there. You know, if it's uh, warm blooded, cold blooded people, should be fine there. I mean, there it just kicked on, pilot's still staying on, I mean, burner's on, so it's reduced down. You can hear it drop down. It's using temperature sensors in there to monitor the temperature that the discharge air is. I mean, this. Looks like there's a little bit of complications to it, but really it's not. The biggest thing is usually um, just maintaining it, which seems to be the 
case it never happens. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and see if we can see a flame here. Usually there's an inspection port right there on the other side. Yeah, I can't see nothing in there. So this inspection port's pretty much useless. I went ahead and put a little, little bitty uh, hole in it, which we can fill in. As you can see right there, what the flame sensor and the burner supply. You can tell we've got some disturbances there over on the right hand side. So I'm going to clean that burner up. It may need adjusted to. Um, you can see, like I said, there on the right hand side there, it just isn't quite where it should be at. I may go ahead and check the uh, differential too to make sure we're good on that. See how it ro rotates down. It should not go all the way down to nothing on the right hand side. So we've got some disturbances in there. We may need to clean those pilots out, pilot holes, the burner holes. So what we can do is turn the main burner off at the gas stop, and that's going to leave just the pilot gas go through. At least that's how the ones I've worked on before have been. See, we still have a pilot flame and main burner on, but the main piece here is off because they're bringing it in through the pilot system here, and that can be adjusted. So let's go back and look at that again. See how it's not making it all the way across? It's not where it should be at. It should make it all the way across. So let's go ahead and do some clean up here real quick and see how it does. Go ahead and shut her down. We've obviously got the main off, so now she should be all right. Let's go ahead and shut it down. We'll go ahead and dig into that burner area, which is not real easy to get into, especially with the way this thing's set up. May have to crawl in uh, in this area here. All right, here we go. So what you can see we're doing here is I am taking my light and putting it behind there so you can see that all the holes seem to be clean. I've had times where the dirt has blocked the air holes behind it. So they're all clean. So I'm gonna run a little uh, undersized, and that's a key here, drill bit in there to make sure those holes are open. You don't wanna make the hole bigger and we'll get that cleaned out. We're gonna go ahead and clean that flame sensor up. You can tell that looks like crap. Probably get a better shot of that if I can get the light on there. You see that flame sensor looks like like uh, dog poop. So, and then we'll check that differential pressure because that's important too. If you're not moving the right air across there, that'll screw with this thing. So, go ahead and grab some small little drill bits and clean that thing up, use my wire brush stainless steel wire brush to lightly clean that uh, flame rod. Before we dig into that, I wanted to look at this pulley here. You can see it's pretty worn on the inside track here, which is probably why we're not gripping the belt very good. It's almost like straight up and down type deal. That really should be replaced. See if we can get them to let us do that. All right, so minimum burner maximum burner so that's the area we want to be within so we're going to check and see there we went ahead and cleaned out our orifices there so we got this clean and cleaned the flame sensor so we're going to check this see what we got all right so our differential is 0.54 so i don't think our pressure switch is an issue unless our switches are acting up so sometimes i'll usually come down here to a t but we're not doing that today just easy sleazy lemon peasy so like i said we're pretty good there on that so let's go ahead and uh, kick this back on, see how our flame is, maybe we'll adjust that. Alright, so it's still not making its way all the way across, so we're going to add a little bit of gas to it to make sure we're all the way across there. That way it lights off the way it should. So let's see if we can make an adjustment on that. Okay, our static pressure should be between 0.67 and 0.675, so we're just a touch low on that. Not a humongo deal. Uh, we're going to set the maximum and low fire rate, which you guys will need to look that up. I'm not going to show you how to do that. So we'll uh, get that set. All right, so we're checking our pilot. It's set right at the factory spec of three inches. So I may try to do a small adjustment, but 
our minimum burner is kind of more what I'm thinking of here. So go ahead and get that. Maybe you see if it makes an adjustment, makes a difference. But if not, we'll go ahead and set it by the minimum to get a nice burner uh, flame all the way across the burner. Okay, that's with the gas valve on, and it's still not making its way all the way across. So as long as this is the same way that the other one was that I've worked on, that should be adjusted across. We've got to put it in its minimum position right now. Uh, remove one of the wires from the uh, modulating valve. So I'm going to double check the instructions, make sure, but it should go all the way across. Yep, I'm correct. Proper minimum reach results in a small ribbon of continuous flame which covers the rod and runs across the entire burner. So let's go ahead and adjust that. All right. Go in the hole. Look at that. That looks pretty decent. I'm a little bit bigger than I want to be in that center piece, but that's, you know, that's about where they want it. It could be a little smaller. What that can cause is possibly a high temperature rise when you don't have a lot of call, but that's also why you don't bring it on when it's like mediocre temperatures out. So we got that minimum position uh, set. Now your high is going to be set based off of your discharge temperature, uh, temperature rise, and that should be somewhere in there. I'll have to look, but it I forget exactly what it's supposed to be, but it'll, it'll be in the paper there. I got to look at it. It's probably like 70. I forget. I'll have to look it up. But that's that's about the only other thing. I'm gonna go grab my head and see what the code was it had. This does have a shutdown after so many minutes. It'll uh, shut down the blower and just lock out or whatever. So actually, just goes blank. I have to see if that's normal. I don't know if that's the freeze protection or what. So um, let's go ahead and run this thing for a bit. See what we we get for temperature rise. All right. So we just turn it back on. See if we can see this thing kick on from the beginning to, to bring on the main burner. There's pilot. The burners come on here. There's the minimum. And it should start modulating now. There it goes. So we'll check our temperature rise, see how that is. That's pretty much how these things work. So guys that have seen this before obviously ain't finding it too exciting but I'm sure there's somebody out there who may not have seen it before all right so there's why my fingers are going numb so we're 23 degrees let's see if I can poke a hole in here and get some temperatures okay you can see it trying to modulate up to that 68 area it overshoots it and it drops down. It's kind of got a little bit of a swing to it. It's not the fastest reacting in the world. You can uh, adjust that on the controller a little bit. So that's about where I've got it set out here. About 60, actually about 65 to yeah, about 67, something like that. Here's your sensitivity right there. Increase, decrease, it's right in the middle. Kind of looks like default do it quicker that'll make a response more but then it can also act stupid so we'll see what it does now it's not like we're talking rocket science here we're just trying to temper the air down there in the kitchen so we're bringing in 23 degree air and we're going out with 60 something and we can put it and lock it into high fire and that's going to show us our absolute maximum rise so like I said I gotta check the sheet here to see where we're at on that all right so design temp change basically rise 72 so tw uh, 23 plus 72 that'd be your maximum temperature coming out of this thing so we can uh, put it into maximum here in a second got to look and see how to do that because I forgot all right, so doing a maximum setup here, and obviously this is way overshooting. Coming out at 170 something, so that's definitely out of whack. Let's go look at our main burner. Oh yeah. That's not set up right, so we need to fix that. That is definitely not right. So, yeah, 176 is gonna trip limit here in a second. So, need to adjust that. All right, so we made some adjustments on the regulator. 
uh, 23 plus 72 comes out to like 95 I think is what it came out to be in so we've got it right in there at that basically just had to adjust the regulator to make it work so we've got our high our minimum fixed um, we had like I said we had to yank a wire off of the max control to force it into that so we'll go ahead and put everything back together just need to check my uh, code that I had so we know at least now that you know under extreme circumstances or a malfunction that there's no way this thing will go extreme and cause any issues we'll get these wires hooked back up and uh, check that uh, code so far it's been running really good uh, and uh, we'll kind of see what we got from there all right so we've got pilot flame flame signal That's good. We wanted 1.25 and up for the uh, flame signal, so we're doing good there. Go in here, try to total cycles 20,000 times, total hours 7,700, fault history, full cycle. 20,000 whatever hours. Twenty-eight pilot flame fail. <clears throat> Nineteen main flame ignition. Airflow switch. So <clears throat> that's kind of going back. So airflow, pilot, whatever. So basically, flame sensor, gas pressure adjustments, you know, and belt issues have been the main issues. So from what I'm seeing, that's pretty much what we got in the history there. But. Yeah. Unused history, so cool. What else do we got in here? Diagnostic info. <clears throat> There's the device. Suffix. Tells you your terminals. I mean, it don't do a whole lot, but flame signal in your, your, your history, I mean, that's about it, but that doesn't need that. I mean, that's just a, an extra. You gotta buy that separate. And it's not cheap. So, there's my date code. Like I said, another eBay special, baby. I don't see a reason to pay the big money they want. I think it's like $350 or something for this thing. Now you can check the flame sensor down here with your DC voltmeter. But from what I'm seeing as of right now, everything's working right. We've got the temperature rise corrected. We've got the minimum uh, set correctly. We've checked our pressure differential. We have uh, got a pulley we need to get the authorization but I, I it'll be here tomorrow if they authorize it and uh, we've got some adjustments made here as far as when it can come on so everything seems to be working pretty good right now I just got to call the guy and get that authorized otherwise it seems to be working good right now so I'm going to say we're pretty much done here if you guys like the video and you want to see more like it you know what to do until next time we will catch you guys on the next one.